I'm Brian from RC Work Boat Haven. Today is part one of a DIY series. I'm going to build an all-weather coastal cargo ship. I want to build an RC Work Boat that will survive wind, rain, sleet, snow, high waves, and survive a rollover. Part one covers design, paint, waterline, ribs, and scuppers. Thanks for watching. This tugboat is very stable, but it has its limitations. Here's the issue. If the tugboat was heeled over like this, let's say it was in heavy surf, and water found its way onto the deck area, the boat may right itself, but it may only do it once, because once the water is in the deck area, it has no way out, because this boat has no scuppers. Scuppers are cutouts along the bulwark that allow the water to drain off the uh, deck. It has to drain somehow. Scuppers are the way to do it. We're going to use the fiberglass version of the 34 inch hull on the other models. I've made a two part mold. The hull is uh, uh, a coat of gel coat, uh, unwaxed, and two layers of one ounce mat. There's a layer of gel coat on the interior. The model has uh, a flange to be used as a deck shelf if you were building a a model directly onto this hull the way it sits now. There's also a gunnel all the way around the, uh, the hull that is at the same height as the deck flange. Two layers of one ounce fiberglass with two hatch openings with a hatch combing around the, uh, around the deck. This fits on top of the deck flange and is then screwed down with small three millimeter bolts. This deck was designed to carry two hatches, one hatch forward and a smaller hatch aft. All weather workboat project, we're not going to have any uh, basswood parts, little uh, bamboo blocks and pulleys, no uh, cotton string, no dowels, nothing like that. This boat is going to have to be pretty well all plastic. And really, my view is the simpler the better. Because when this boat is out in rough water, it could be rolled over and it could, as it's rolling, it could hit a rock. So I'm not going to design this boat uh, to be a, uh, a display model. It's more of a, a, a working fun boat, something you can get out into the, onto the water with in any weather. Rain, um, sleet, snow, rollers. This is going to be the, the bad weather boat. Won't be fast, but it's going to be fun. We're going to arrange this deck house, pilot house, aft. And now what we have is a small coastal delivery ship. The first step with a hull that's come out of a two-part mold is to just do a once-over on the seams here where it's joined together. You have to sand this gel coat to give it a, a little bit of a, a tooth so it'll accept uh, our latex primer. I use uh, 80 grit to do that. Uh, unwaxed gel coat is uh, fairly easy to sand. It doesn't clog up the paper at all. I spent uh, approximately one hour so far sanding the hull. We have to, we have to sand the upper part of the deck flange and the inside of the bulwark. That's going to receive primer as well. 
The inside we don't touch. We just leave that as a uh, uh, gel coat. So there we are. We're ready to paint. So here's the, here's the uh, latex multi-purpose primer sealer we're going to use. Just run your run your uh, rag along the, uh, the the top railing area. So there's the first layer of latex. We'll let it harden up for 24 hours, and then we'll put one more layer of latex on the hull tomorrow. So the first thing you got to do is check for any lumps or runs and so on and try to make note of any spots that you may have missed. It looks pretty good. And here we go again. So now we have a hull that's ready to work on. In a few days that latex will be quite hard. It'll take pencil marks for lining out different things. It now has two coats of latex uh, primer sealer on the hull and in the flange. I'm just going to give it a really quick sanding just like that. Uh, the boat set up on a one half inch thick block eight inches back from the stem the, the bottom of the keel at the keel shoe end is laying directly onto the grid six and uh, 13 sixteenths on that side six and 13 sixteenths on this side we would be able to mark the water line by sliding this little uh, one two three block we are set up on a, a surface that I know is very level. Just slide the pencil along the hull, just like this. Don't press too hard. I like to come back and just check in here to make sure it hasn't moved, a little, moved at all. Pull around. Let's get it rigged up and do the starboard side. Now back here in the shoulder, we're just going to go around the corner on it. Let's deal with the water line just under here in the after area. Here is the water line marked in pencil all the way around. I've just extended the water line mark a little bit onto the uh, counter area. I use this little pattern to make a, a nice a nice smooth mark. This little, this little guide allows me to mark the position of the shaft hole here and the position of the rudder shaft here. The rudder shoe here. And make a mark. That's the center line of the shaft hole. And we have the fore and aft position marked for the uh, rudder shaft. I'll make a small mark here and a small mark here. It's still easy to see where the seams are. Make a mark here. We're going to mark the position of the ribs that will go along the inner side of the bulwark. These ribs will be glued with wood glue directly onto the latex. But we need a guide in order to uh, put them in the right position. The frames are not at right angles to the slope of the deck, forward and aft. They're vertical. We have to imagine this boat was built in a shipyard. After doing a fair number of boats, I realized that it would be easier just to make a pattern so that I could quickly mark the position of the ribs. I'm going to place a little uh, ruler 
on this line, I have little triangles cut out that will allow me to get my pencil in. And I'm going to put a mark at the bottom and one at the top. I have a series now of little tick marks that I can join up with one stroke of the pencil. Just like that. So we're going to use 1 8 by 1 8 basswood. Place it against the line, hold it with your thumb, move around, mark the end, cut it down here with a utility knife. It won't matter if you cut it too short or too long because you can always go to the next one. And then put a small clamp on here to hold it. So that's one rib in position. We're not going to glue them yet. We'll do that all at once. So there's two. So it's just a process of uh, repetition all the way around the boat. And then we'll uh, glue them all in. We have all the ribs clamped into position. Gluing on ribs is pretty straightforward. It doesn't take too long once you get your hands working uh, in a coordinated way. I have uh, a little method where each one that has been glued, I have the clamps lined up perfectly um, in, in line with the rib. The ones that aren't glued, the clamps are at an angle. So let's do this next one here and I'll show you how I'm doing it. Try to pick it up and turn it in the same way every time. Just takes a bit of glue here. Turn your hand again and put it back in the same position. Try to line it up. As best you can. Put your clamp back and there you've got one. I like to leave the line on when I, when I uh, glue them so I can be sure I've got it lined up and replace the clamp in the vertical position. Here we are the next day. We have all the ribs in position. Next, just make sure that none of the ribs are projecting above the top of the railing here. And now clean up the workplace. The work done so far on the model would be uh, part of the, the, the necessary uh, steps whether you are building a, a trawler or a tugboat. We're building an all-weather boat. So what I have in mind is to use inexpensive plastic parts, hang long seaport tugboat. This is uh, the way a lot of people first uh, experienced RC work boats. And they are well made and they are uh, put together by little screws. So all of these parts do separate. And what I noticed here was the original um, configuration had the ladder facing forward on the tugboat and a crane aft. But the four screws inside here that hold this top part with the windows comes off and it can be turned 180 degrees and screwed back on. And now I think that I've got a pretty good after deck house for a small coastal uh, freighter. So let's move this around here and set it on. There we go. I have to make scuppers in here between the ribs and the scuppers will start about here 
and go to about there. We're ready now to start on our all-weather hull configuration. I decided to make a small gauge to uh, mark out ribs for scuppers if I have to do it again in the future. This will save time. So what it is is two pieces of one quarter by one eighth steel parallel of the same length. Over here you see it's uh, running snug against the side of the rib and then on the other side when we turn it around we've got a parallel arm we can make a line mark like that I have a rectangular guide for the scuppers marked out now there's nine on each side I thought about the size of the scuppers, but decided that it would be better at the end of the day to say my scuppers were a bit too big rather than too small after I'd finished this all-weather boat. I plan to use a jigsaw blade to cut out these scuppers. A drill bit, three-eighths of an inch in diameter, will allow me to get the jigsaw into each corner and turn and cut it out. In order to mark it, I'm going to use a 3 16 piece of metal stock and mark the center by turning it around uh, in each corner. So I'll mark those out and then show you at that point where we're at. Now we have the four uh, marks that we need in each corner of the scupper and I'm going to drill a pilot hole with a two millimeter bit. I've drilled the port side with the two millimeter drill bit right through the bulwark so now we'll just do the starboard side. I have marked them um, halfway through in each case so let's just do one hole and I'll show you what it That's it right there. The first 3 8 hole was drilled with no problem, so I'll do one here to, just to show you what's happening. So it looks like that looks like I can just proceed using this method. The next step is to use the jigsaw and cut out the hole to hole following a line. So let's do one and see how that goes. So here's two of them cut here and here. I'll continue along and do the bottom as well and these little center pieces of the uh, scupper should come right out. So the next step is to pick up a file and clean up the inside of the cut. We're going to leave a radius on the top and a square, uh, a square corner on the bottom. Using 80 grit I'm going to clean up the, uh, mark the, the, the lines I made to mark out the scuppers. And there we go. So that's the end of part one.
We're going to finish this all-weather ship and take it out into the nastiest weather we can find. We'll do it step by step. Don't miss the next video. Please subscribe today. Thanks for watching.